uh, is a place where I've, I've been suspecting malware to place itself to hide with all the unsigned images that go in the GAC over time. I mean, there's no, it's a, it's a hive of scum and villainy in there in the GAC. And it's a great place to hide, but I haven't seen anybody take advantage of that yet. So anyway, I would check the Windows directory and the Windows System 32 directory with those switches, as well as the program files directory. Strings is a utility. Let's talk about strings. If you've got a process that's suspicious, another way you can take a deeper look into it is come to the process view and go to the strings tab. And this will show you printable strings inside the file. One of the problems with this, though, is that if the image is packed or compressed, then you'll only be seeing the strings that are in the on-disk image, which will be garbage. That's where this memory button comes into play, which will show you the strings in the image as it's mapped into RAM. So this is how this process is unfolded. And then what you want to do is look for suspicious URLs. <laughs> There's one right there. So this is uh, actually process is shaping up to be quite suspicious at this point. And I think we can confirm that it is probably malware. Finally, there's another view, the DLL view. Which, when malware is hiding inside of a legitimate process, what, you'll, what you can do is open up the lower pane with the D control D view. You can add the verified signer column to that as well and check for unsigned images in processes that are hosts and you can see that, well, the executable image itself is considered a DLL in the case of Process Explorer. And that's where another tool called list DLLs list DLLs from sysinternals dash U star will dump any unsigned DLLs in any process that it has, that it's running. So it didn't find any at this point. Finally, now that we've identified that win host, it looks really suspicious, what do you do? Kill it, right? No, that's inhumane. Put it to sleep first. <laughs> now, the reason that I've got that advice, it comes from, I haven't seen this in a while, but four or five years ago, I saw it quite a bit. The buddy system was in play. Watch when I try to kill this win host right here. What happens? Now, let me turn on the uh, refresh rate, the highlight duration so that we can see this thing. Let me kill this guy, uh, this one. I've got actually a few of them. Oh, and then another one pops up. And if I kill this one, another one pops up. So these are using what's, what I call the buddy system. One is watching the other guy's back. And if any of them, go, if the other one goes down, he's gonna revive him. He's gonna go take over the paddles and zap him back. And so it becomes very hard to go cleaning the malware off a system when you've got this buddy system in play. But you can suspend them, put them to sleep. So I'm going to suspend all these guys. And I, there's four of them. And at this point, actually sort by this. Now I simply, I love, love the sound of that new bell. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. <laughs> love is in a sarcastic kind of love. So, uh, now we've cleaned up the active processes. We're ready to move on to phase two, cleaning the auto start locations for this piece of malware so that it doesn't come back. How many people use MS config to go cleaning off auto starts? Let's see if you raise your hands. So I'm surprised that you'll raise your hands after I made fun of you the first time. <laughs> uh, MS config, now I have to say though, there's been a tremendous amount of work done on MS config in Windows 8. Have you used it? Anybody used the Win MS config? Let's go take a look. So we've got the, uh, the general tab, that looks the same. Here, let's go to startup and check it out with, wow. <laughs> so tremendous amount of I innovation and reimagining here in MS Config. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is uh, use a different tool called Auto Runs. And this is another sysinternals tool. Let's run Auto Runs. And by default, it's going to scan my entire system and show me all the files that are configured to auto start or load inside of processes like Explorer or Internet Explorer or Windows Media Player or whatever the media player modern one's called. And what 
I want to do, and this is going to take a while because it's actually reaching out to group policy settings, uh, scripts that are on Microsoft's CorpNet, and I'm not connected to the CorpNet right now, so you can see here's one, this uh, B deploy script here. What I'll, I'll do to kind of get rid of the noise, let me press escape and see if I can get control of this thing, is the network behaves with me. Okay. We had to wait for those threads to clean up. And I'm going to say hide Microsoft entries and verify c code signatures. You can also see all the places auto run looks by checking that. But with this, I'm going to filter out anything that is Microsoft that is digitally signed. And at this point, I see things that aren't. And showing up in red, images that don't have valid digital signatures. And in any images that are not Microsoft showing up just as white. And the things you're going to want to look for are, of course, the red things. Anything that's yellow means that auto runs can't find the image. So these generally aren't bad. In fact, there's some just locations built into Windows where there's kind of orphaned pointers off to things that aren't there. So not, not, no need to be con too concerned about those. For those that are showing up, though, and by the way, there's different ways to look at this, like here's the logon location. Here's one, the Windows host run that we saw. And what you can do at this point is take a look at when it was made. So I made this a while ago. You can see the version information. You can jump to the location in the registry where that's configured. You can jump to the file system location. You can search online for it, or you can look at the properties for it. Now what I'll do at this point is uncheck it, and that basically disables it. There's a few more things that I want to point out with Auto Runs is able to do. It's, it's able to scan offline systems, so you can load registry hives of a, a system, so you boot off of uh, Windows to go, for example, or connect an external drive, and then point Auto Runs at the root Windows directory, and you will, can scan it for auto, auto starts and do your cleaning from there. You can also scan other profiles on the same system. So if you've got a situation where it's a standard user account that's been infected, you've got another admin account that hasn't been, you can do the scanning of that standard user account from the admin account to clean the malware off the system. And there's a, a couple new features I'll mention here briefly. One is that I added a timestamp column in about a month ago. So now we'll show you the last modified time for the entries, which can be useful in the scenario where you believe that you got infected just in the last few days. Now you can go look at timestamps and see if those correlate with the activity that you might, uh, correlating with the malware. Also, there's an auto runs C tool that I'll mention. This is if you're running in a corporate environment. Auto Run C, you can have it scan the same way that Auto Runs does with the same filters, and you can even have it print out in CSV format so that you can scan your corporate networks regularly, pull them up into Excel, dump them into SQL or whatever, and be looking across your network to see if you've got suspicious auto starts showing up on your domain controllers. I mentioned don't delete the auto starts. This is just troubleshooting 101. Try not to do things you can't undo because you never know if you're going to make a mistake and go, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. If you just uncheck versus delete, then you're able to go and undo it. Sometimes things come back, so that's where we're going to use Process Monitor to trace activity. How many people have used Process Monitor? So quite a few of you. Process Monitor makes network tracing or system tracing relatively easy. In fact, I've got a slogan. It's called When in Doubt, Run Process Monitor. It's actually Dave Solomon came up with that. Let's say it together. When in doubt, run process monitor. Okay, you're not very good at it yet, but we'll work on that. <laughs> and let's just take a quick look at what we see. Timestamps, process name with a tooltip that shows us version, inf uh, version information, operation, path, the result of the operation, and in special information over here in the detail columns about the operation. We're going to spend some time looking at real malware. So I'm not going to take a close look at that, but just highlight a few of the features. By the way, when my daughter comes home from school with homework questions, I have her run process monitor first 